Hey everybody, Mr. James here, continuing my series on Bootstrap and uh, the ASP.NET MVC framework. Uh, today we're going to have a uh, we're going to take a little bit of a, a detour here from the regular course. Now, along the way so far in the series, what I've been doing is kind of breaking down what it takes to actually integrate the Bootstrap components, the CSS and JavaScript that are kind of featherweight as far as trying to integrate them and make something really good uh, come about in your project, especially for those of us who aren't designers by trade. Um, but uh, not only looking at the CSS and the JavaScript pieces, but also how does that fit into your MVC project and how do you make that work? Well, uh, in this post, what we're going to do instead is we're going to have a look at a package that uh, is available now that kind of gives your gives your project a head start, a way to kickstart your project and get the MVC goodness bits directly inside uh, and melding well with the bootstrap bits. Now, uh, the, the name of the package, it's, it's available on NuGet. It's called twitter.bootstrap.mvc4. And the way to kind of see the most out of it is to install the samples package. So we're going to have a look at how we do that. Um, but uh, I guess uh, just a, a word of mention here, this is the, the brainchild of Eric uh, Hexter, who is uh, an architect of awesome, works over at Dell, a small company you might have heard of. Hmm? Uh, but we, the, the great thing about it is that it's an open source project. So I'm going to show you a couple of things really quickly here. We'll ju jump into Visual Studio 2012 and uh, have a look at how we get started. Now, first of all, what we're going to do is click on File, New Project. This is kind of the standard thing that we have come to know and do. And I'm just going to do uh, an exploring, exploring the Twitter bootstrap MVC package so I'll just follow convention here and we will type that in now I'm going to select an internet actually sorry in this case we're not going to start with an internet application we're going to start with an empty application and this is important because right now the the state of the package the state of the build um, requires that you start from an empty template it'll add all the dependencies that it needs in order to get started and whatnot but we're going to start with an empty template and then we'll show you how to I'll show you how to kind of add some of that stuff in at this point, uh, the package gets spun up for us uh, while we wait for Visual Studio. Now, what we would normally do after this gets started, if we wanted to kind of get something going, is we'd, we'd jump in here and we'd install package, uh, sorry, uh, install package, and we would do Twitter, not that, Twitter dot bootstrap and this would give us the JavaScript and CSS that we need but we're gonna go one step further and type in dot MVC4 now this is the package that I was talking about um, that lives up on on github this is one way that we can do it this is gonna get you the latest stable build that was actually propagated out on the, the NuGet package was um, actually put together um, and published out onto the NuGet feed but there's another way to do this if you download the source the latest source from uh, GitHub. So just go into GitHub, branch it, and uh, clone it into Windows. Um, you can get the excellent tool um, uh, put together by GitHub called GitHub for Windows. Um, you can just throw that in your search engine of choice. Get that and uh, fork that project. Um, I'll make sure that I put the links in the related blog post here. So, um, anyways. Go and grab that package, uh, sorry, go and uh, fork that repository, pull the source down, and then I'm going to show you what, you, what you're going to do. Basically, you're going to have a, a source directory that looks something like, not that one, looks something like this. And if you right click on this build.ps, now I've got uh, the Windows SDK installed, so I've got the ability to run PowerShell right from uh, pretty much anywhere in the system. So I'm going to run, it's a PS1 script here, so I'm going to run this with PowerShell. And what it's going to do is actually build all of the NuGet packages that are required, kind of some interdependent uh, things that go on here. And it's going to uh, light up this output directory for me. Now the next step that I, I make in order to use the latest version of everything that's in the package is inside my package. Package Manager Console, what I've done here is I've created a Twitter Bootstrap MVC local build and I've basically pointed it at the output directory from that PowerShell script. Now this allows me to very easily uh, reference these packages and install them uh, right from within Visual Studio. So now I just point at this TBM local feed and uh, before I execute that I'll just show you that this is all that's now in the feed. I can just uh, do a get uh, package wait for that to come up and I'm just going to do a dash list available 
and you'll see here that this is basically the same contents of that uh, directory. Now, uh, just to kind of show you how that works, um, if I go, let me close these other windows down here. Uh, if I go into the, my, this library again and I go into this output and I delete that guy, back in Visual Studio right away, same idea, no packages. So just I want to show you that there's, there's no uh, smoke and mirrors here. This is actually how you do this. This is all I do in order to um, get the latest versions uh, built out. Okay, so now that I've got that available in my feed, I'll just verify that the packages are there. I'm going to do my install package Twitter Bootstrap MVC, but I'm going to do one more dot there, and I'm going to install the sample, because the sample actually gives us a few extra wiring bits and some helpers that are going to make it a little bit easier for you to kind of move around. It gives you a way to explore this fairly easily. So uh, it goes off and again uh, just kind of resolves any of the dependencies. It's the wonderful thing about NuGet is that when you do install a package and it's got other packages that it needs in order to uh, wire itself up, it goes and takes care of all of those for you. It goes and either pulls them down from your local cache on your machine or it'll actually go out on the web and suck the packages off of the main NuGet feed. Whatever, whatever uh, package sources you have set up inside Visual Studio, it's going to be able to leverage those and pull down uh, the data that it needs. Now, um, just by virtue of doing that, um, you can see here it's added a, a number of things. First of all, it's fleshed out my app start. Um, it's added some stuff here in the Bootstrap support directory. Um, content is now populated with all the requ all the requisite files for uh, Bootstrap itself, and uh, we've got this Bootstrap base controller which is kind of a starting point. Now, I, again, if you are familiar with uh, MVC, controllers are just classes. So um, the Bootstrap base controller inherits from controller, but now on any controller that we're going to create going forward, we're actually going to use the Bootstrap base controller as what we inherit from, and that's going to give us access to very easily push alerts into this temp data um, uh, container that we've got and uh, show alerts that the, the bootstrap style alerts on the page. Uh, now there's an example layout controller and a home controller. Something very interesting here that I want to show you. Um, the package here that, uh, that's been created contains uh, what we would call automatic scaffolding. Now you'll remember from the routing that's built into MVC4 that the first thing that's going to happen is uh, when that request comes in is it's going to get mapped to a controller. Now the controller gets executed so we're going to have that, that slash home kind of bit that gets mapped into our route. You can see this inside app start in the route config. So uh, the default controller is home, the default action is index. So if you make a naked request to the URL that you're looking at, it's going to come and land in this guy right here. Now it, just a, a quick thing to point out here, if you're wondering how this works, I'm going to hit F5 uh, here just to build and run the application so you'll kind of get an idea of uh, what it is that's actually uh, outputting, what we're actually getting for free here just by starting. You can see there's this home input model, there's a listing, and then it just dumps a table, we get some actions to edit, details, we can delete it, um, widget was deleted so I got that alert back and then I've got a, a only one item left. I can create a new one. Um, name is uh, James. Blog is foo.com. Uh, start date. Oh, let's do 1 1 2013. And some password. I'll hit save changes. You can see, oh, I must enter a valid URL HTTP. Colon whack whack. There we go. You can see though that it's got all the common elements that you would see inside of uh, Bootstrap. So again, I've got this information, your information was saved. I've got this other alert, the success alert. Uh, the menu itself supports um, out of the box some breaks. So you can see there's a horizontal break here and I've got a vertical break as well uh, inside the menu. So it supports the menus and the child menus. This is done uh, through a very expressive syntax that makes it very easy to kind of lay out your menus. Um, I use it in a plugin scenario so uh, the plugins actually have an opportunity to register their own routes and these are done through the routing um, bits that are part of uh, MVC. So um, you can see here that it's quite rich. We get this uh, fairly rich thing going on. How does this all come together? Well, again, we're, I'm going to look now in this home controller, and you can see I've got this uh, member variable called models. And all it's going to do is create this home input models, kind of step it back in there. Now, my index, all it does is basically push this home input models. Here's the, here's the catch though, here's where things get really cool. Inside my views directory, I would expect there to be a home folder. Now, there isn't one. 
And what do we know about views inside the MVC framework? Well, we use convention over configuration. So if I've got a view, if I've got an action or a method in my controller, my class called index, the route is going to be looking to execute that method. And of course, there's no parameters in. So this is our match. We're going to get this one. Now, I'm just returning a view and I'm, I'm just sending back this list of home input model. Well, I should have a home directory here where my list could be displayed, right? We would normally scaffold a view and, you know, I'd go through the whole process of add view and create a strongly typed view and make it a list of et cetera, et cetera, right? This is the kind of thing that we would do. But in this case, uh, what Eric and contributors on the project have put together is this idea of automatic scaffolding. The first place that the MVC framework will look is for that in in that home directory, but failing that, it defaults back to shared. Now in shared, we'll see here that there is indeed an index. What do we get inside index? Well, it basically uh, uses a number of helpers that have been created, uses uh, some reflection, some of the pieces inside of uh, reflection to iterate over all of the properties that are on the class, all of the visible properties on the class, output the names of them. It does uh, some pretty smart things here too. There's another helper in here called two separated words, which will actually make it a little kind of English readable so that instead of just having the uh, uh, the class uh, name all stuck together or a property name all stuck together, it's going to break those words apart for us um, based on, on caps. Um, so there's, there's a number of interesting things that happens here. Again, for each record in the uh, model for every model in the, the page model or again uh, going up to the top it's an I enumerable it's all as it's it, all as it is it's expecting so in the case of index you can automatically have any index page on any controller scaffolded simply by passing in a list of data so this is this is brilliant it's going to do the stripe table for us this is all part of the the bootstrap styling and the, the result is that a row is going to be generated and there will be a cell for every visible property with the data that you've put in along with a drop down menu for some basic controls on that record. So um, again, this is all for free. Just to kind of have a look at that again, I'm uh, passing in in my home controller. Um, I'm using this home input model. I've got a list of home input model and that's all I'm pushing to the view. So when I flip into Internet Explorer, I get this home input model. You can see start data is another property that's been split apart for me and I get these actions. And all of this is just for free, just for using this uh, package off of NuGet. Now uh, let's have a look at a couple of other things. Let's go back to the routing and the menu that's been built up for us. Super easy to implement. You're going to love this. Um, all you have to do is jump into um, your app start folder and have a look at the uh, example layouts route config. It's a little bit long winded. You're probably going to rename it in your own project. But again, this is just the sample project just showing you how you would get uh, kind of wired up. Now, I'm going to add another um, route in here. In order to do that, I'm going to need a few more um, helper methods here. I've got a delete. I've got an edit. Uh, let's have a look here. I'm just going to add some some simple, easy things to uh, use here, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to wire up your controllers. Now, I've got a public action result. Oops. Action result. Uh, foo. Return a view for me, and I will just do foo and I will do uh, bar of course and boo there we go now back into my uh, in the place where I would register my menu items I'm gonna add another route I'm gonna do map navigation route and it's gonna be off the home controller this is cool because now I can um, use uh, a lambda expression to kind of map out my uh, what it is I actually want to go to. So I'm going to say foo here and then of course I'm going to get that controller and I want to pass it to foo. So that's the method that I want it to execute and uh, I don't, it's not going to be part of an area and I do not need a break after it so I'm just going to uh, close her off there uh, with a actually we want to add a couple of children so we're just going to keep going here. Now we're going to do an add child route and it's going to be off of home controller as well um, but this guy is going to be to that uh, 
bar method, and this is going to go to C dot bar. No area, and but this time I want to break after it, and I will show you what that is in a second. Add child route. You can already imagine that horizontal break that I was mentioning before as we were kind of looking at it. Uh, now I'll go to this boo, and uh, we do not need anything after it. So um, that should be enough. The next time I run it, we are going to see some awesomeness here in the menu up at the top. There we go. I've got my, just to relate this all here together, I start with the automatic scaffolding and I do have a break at the end. And then I add my next uh, piece in and there should be a break before bar and boo and I should get a drop down menu for foo. And of course that's what we see, a drop down menu for foo with a bar and a boo. Uh, break in between. And then to finish that off, we've got the one that was here before uh, where we have the example layouts controller and a couple of links into that. Uh, so there you go. Now that is actually, all of this is part of another package that is uh, kind of being worked on right now, and it's part of navigation routes. Right now this is all just um, CS, that, like just a C Sharp that's added to your project. I imagine down the road this is actually probably going to be broken out, not only into a separate package, but also just compiled and output as a DLL that will be added um, as part of the build process. Um, that'll make it a little bit easier to um, uh, just kind of consume as a, as a consumer rather than a contributor. Um, I like to think of that as two separate roles where there's there's things that we want to contribute and work on and there's things that we want to consume. And this is probably one of the ones that you're going to want to consume more than you contribute to. Just once it's ready and it's, it's mature, it's going to be just part of projects going forward for you. So that's basically... Um, the gist of it. There's a couple of other things in there. There's the post redirect get pattern that's being used as well support for that. Um, there's a helper uh, to kind of fix one of the uh, validation problems. Actually not not a fix, more of a um, just to decorate uh, the validation bits a little bit better, add some classes and stuff to just support the, the jQuery, uh, sorry the bootstrap version of validation and things like that. Um, but in a nutshell you get this great looking site uh, for relatively cheap um, as far as effort goes and something that you can get working on right away using some of these bootstrap uh, features that you want. Now again I am going to continue down the path of exploring uh, bootstrap at uh, uh, detail level and how you can leverage it from the the MVC framework and inside your projects that way. But I um, I'm already using this um, in an application that we're uh, that that I'm building and um, I I think that it's something that you can probably add to your arsenal and your library as well. Uh, again, thanks for uh, joining me here. Again, I'm Mr. James. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Canadian James and my blog is at jameschambers.com. Thanks very much.